Hello, welcome to InfoHub. Here is what you need to know for today, Wednesday, July 4, 2018. CARICOM's 39th Heads of Government meeting underway in Jamaica. Ghana's Money Laundering, Terrorist Financing and National Risk Assessment Seminar opens, new CCJ president appointed, and much more in tonight's news. And now for the details. We begin with the news that the 39th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM officially opened this afternoon in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Our senior videographer, Kwesi Wishart, has traveled with President David Granger, and this is our first report. Incoming Chair and Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness, addressed the opening. Speeches were also made by the outgoing Chairman and President of Haiti, Hovenel Moise, and Secretary General of CARICOM, Ambassador Erwin Larocque. Before the opening, the new president of the Caribbean Court of Justice was sworn in. Justice Adrian Saunders replaces Sir Dennis Byron at the community's highest court of appeal. Over the next two days, the heads of states will meet in plenary and caucus to deliberate a range of critical matters, including measures impacting the implementation of the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, or CSME, crime and security, building post-hurricane disaster resilience, and emerging geopolitical developments which can have an impact on the region's growth prospects. They will also receive and discuss the final report on the CARICOM Commission on Marrow. Wanna. Check our social media pages for more detailed reports. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. The Hero Caribbean Premier League, CPL, has signed a historic deal which will see Ghana hosting the playoff matches for the first time. The two games will be held on September 11 and 12, 2018. Minister of State Joseph Harmon said this move suitably rewards the Guyanese diaspora for their fate in the CPL. I believe that CPL now... Um, understands that uh, Guyana, apart from, from the cricketing public, that we have a very strong government administration, that we are very committed to sport, that we understand the role which sport plays in our national psyche and in the happiness of our people. And so we want to ensure that that kind of investment which is made in the happiness of our people as part of that good life which we promised to all Guyanese, that sport plays a very meaningful role in that. A total of seven Hero CPL matches, including five group games, will be held here this year. CEO of CPL Pete Russell said Guyana may soon be the home of CPL in the Caribbean. We're delighted because obviously for CPL, Guyanese cricket fans are what make the CPL what it is, which is the biggest party in sport. It resonates around the world, everyone wants to come and see it, and our objective is to make Guyana the home of sport in the Caribbean. Um, so we're thrilled that this day has come. The Hero Caribbean Premier League, which began in 2013, is a franchise-based T20 format cricket tournament that combines exhilarating matches and a vibrant carnival atmosphere. Renette LaFleur for InfoHub. The Honourable Justice Adrian Dudley Saunders, a citizen of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, was appointed as the incoming president of the Caribbean Court of Justice with effect from July 4, 2018. According to a release from the CCJ, which was published on the website CARICOM Today, the appointment was made at the CARICOM Heads of Government's last meeting held in Haiti on February 26 and 27, 2018 acting on the nomination of the Regional Judicial and Legal Services Commission, the RJLSC selected Justice Saunders after a competitive merit-based process. Chairman of the Caribbean Association of Judicial Officers, Justice Adrian Dudley Saunders, is also the course director of the Halifax-based Commonwealth Judicial Education Institute. He holds a Bachelor of Law degree from the University of the West Indies, Cave Hill, in 1975, and the Legal Education Certificate of the Hugh Wooding Law School in Trinidad and Tobago in 1977. He was called to the Bar of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in that same year. After serving as a Chief Justice, Saunders was appointed a judge of the CCG in 2005. The 64-year-old replaces Sir Dennis Byron, a native of St. Kitts and Nevis, who took over from Trinidadian Michael de la Bastide. Moving on with other news, the International Court of Justice, ICJ, has set dates for the submission of petitions in the case regarding the Ghana-Venezuela border controversy. Here are details. In a release issued on July 2, the ICJ said Guyana and Venezuela have until November 19, 2018 and April 18, 2019 respectively to file its memorial and counter-memorial. 
A memorial is a petition or representation that will have to be made by the legal teams for the party in the matter. The ICJ said it has to first resolve the question of its jurisdiction before making a determination on the border controversy. In March, Guyana filed its application to the ICJ requesting it to confirm the legal validity and binding effect of the award regarding the boundary between the colony of British Guyana and United States of Venezuela on October 3, 1899, here and after the 1899 award. Following its initial application in June, teams from Guyana and Venezuela met with the ICJ president. Guyana requested nine months to prepare its memorial, while Venezuela indicated that it will not proceed with the matter since the court does not have jurisdiction. The ICJ is the principal juridical organ of the United Nations. It was established by the United Nations Charter in June 1945. The decades-old border controversy was referred to the ICJ by the United Nations Secretary General after decades of mediation attempts were unsuccessful in settling the controversy. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Basil Williams said a risk-based approach to countering money laundering, terrorist financing and proliferation financing is necessary. Here's more. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Basil Williams said much more needs to be done by financial agencies to address money laundering in keeping with international requirements. This process will help us to be more effective and efficient as we will know where we are and what else needs to be done. Follow-up leads to follow-through and it's necessary to effectively delegate tasks within project teams. This is one critical means by which we will monitor our progress in implementing mitigating measures. He was speaking at Guyana's Money Laundering Terrorist Financing National Risk Assessment Seminar hosted today at the Georgetown Club. The seminar is a follow-up to the National Risk Assessment completed in 2017 which aimed to determine Guyana's money laundering risks and what can be done to protect our financial system. A.G. Williams explains. We were also able to uncover threats on our vulnerable areas. The NRA determined our overall risk of money laundering, that the overall risk of money laundering in Guyana is high. This outcome stems from the high rate assigned to the overall national threat and vulnerability, which was rated medium high. But I suspect a lot of people might be surprised at that. Regarding terrorist financing, the threat is medium. It is important for me to paint this realistic picture so that we can know where we are and the amount of work that we have to do come 2022. When we will be assessed again, with senior videographer Derek Bridge Mohan, Stacey Carmichael for InfoHub. An I Burbis and Georgetown will soon benefit from the Ministry of Public Telecommunications first edition of the updated Caribbean Telecommunications Union Information and Communication Technology and e Agriculture Roadshow. Details in this report. The historic event slated for the Arthur Chung Convention Center from July 9 to 13, 2018, will see presentations on the use of ICT in several sectors. Ministerial advisor and head of the innovative unit of the ministry, Lance Hines, talked about what persons can expect at the five-day event. We are going to have a significant section as well on electronic finance and digital finance. Um, so we're going to be talking about blockchain. We're going to be talking about the application of blockchain. We're going to see companies coming in talking about how they're doing it in the region at the moment and providing some insight in terms of how it could be done here. So there is a section on that. There's also, and in that as well, we're going to talk to, um, we're going to have a few local providers who will also show some of the work that they are doing in that space. Youths will also benefit from information on ICT career opportunities. The event is primarily sponsored by Digicel, along with support from the United Nations International Telecommunications Union and Food and Agriculture Organization. Digicel representative Nalini Vera. This is in line with our overall aim to ensure that countries and their citizens benefit from our presence. We want to help to create a world where no one gets left behind. We are, we are supportive of any and all initiatives designed to promote innovation in an adaptation of ICT as an engine for all aspects of the Caribbean development. 
the CTU ICT Roadshow will highlight trending areas in the sector and demonstrate how technology can be used to improve the livelihoods. Main events include an e-agriculture forum, youth fair, and an open day at the Artichung Convention Center. There will also be outreaches in Burbese and Anai on July 11 and 14, respectively. Renetta LaFleur for InfoHub. In keeping with the Education Ministry's Regional Strategic Plan, another nursery school was commissioned in Diamond on the east bank of Demerara. More in this report. Less than one week after commissioning Eastville Nursery School in South Annandale, the Ministry of Education, along with the Regional Democratic Council, Region No. 4, commissioned Diamond No. 2 Nursery School, located at 5th Avenue Diamond Housing Scheme, East Bank Demerara. Acting Assistant Chief Education Officer with the responsibility for nursery, Ms. Samantha Williams, said due to the increase of the community's nursery-aged children, a decision was made to construct another school. There are other sister schools in its environs, namely Diamond, Grove and Campbell's Trust Nursery Schools. However, the distance to these schools posed a degree of inconvenience to parents as well as to the learners, and this affected the attendance and punctuality rates of learners at these schools. Transportation woes and, of course, the overcrowding of the aforementioned sister schools caused the regional administration to work towards acquiring another nursery school in this community. The Diamond No. 2 Nursery School was constructed in 2017 at a cost of $22.1 million and can accommodate 100 students in six classrooms. Region 4 Regional Chairman Genevieve Allen said that due to the growing populace within the Diamond Housing Scheme community, there would be a need for an expansion of the building. Therefore, at the Regional Democratic Council, we took a decision that with savings under the education's capital budget that an extension to this building was sought from the Ministry of Finance. Same was approved and the parents and residents. I stand here to further say to you, as was said by Ms. Batson Andrews, that commencing Sometime in August of this year, an extension to this building will be further constructed. Regional Chairman Allen officially handed over the keys to the building to the headmistress, Nicola Jeffers. Anara Khan for InfoHub. And in our final report, local artist Gavin Mendonca has the opportunity to attend the World of Music, Art and Dance event in the United Kingdom. Anara Khan has more to tell us. A unique Guyanese artist with an exceptional musical flair, Gavin Mendonca, is on a mission to accomplish his dreams. He created his very own musical style directly related to Guyanese culture. I have come up with my own style of music called Creole Rock which is a fusion of Guyanese folk music, that's the foundation, um, with our Creole culture and dialect, how we talk, because I do believe our voice um, is, a, is a true representation of our identity, and also uh, punk rock to kind of fit it all together. Mendonza has done renditions of Guyanese folk songs and songs by Dave Martins and Eddie Grant. He has also composed his own pieces that reflect Guyanese history. However, his full-time career comes with challenges. One of the main challenges, of course, is finances. Um, it's, uh, there's no steady stream of income, um, and not a lot of people book rock musicians. Despite these challenges, Mendonza has been given a unique opportunity to attend the International Music Festival in the United Kingdom, but to attend this, he needs his country's support. It will be a great opportunity for me to go and experience um, a, a fully functioning music industry and to network and meet people like myself and other musicians, A&R representatives, 
um, booking agents, festival directors, and the likes for me to develop relationships with them so that I could come back home with the new knowledge I would, I would have acquired so that I can contribute to the development of our local music industry and um, also provide opportunities for myself and for my colleagues here in Guyana. Persons interested in contributing can head over to his website at creolrock.com where they would be guided to an Indiegogo page to contribute. Contributors will receive a digital copy of his debut album, Creole Rock, The Beginning, or a private link to watch his short film, How to Build a Treehouse, filmed at Kaitro Falls, which features the Patamona language and folklore. It was directed and produced by Ziggy of Infinity Productions. Anara Khan for InfoHub. Here now are your bridge and weather reports. Goodbye.